September 5th, 1994. Nancy knew that her time was running short. David was now out of his cast and was doing well in physiotherapy. Crystal had written to her saying they had decided to get married on October 22nd. From the beginning, they had planned a small wedding, so Nancy knew if she was going to act, now was the time to do it. The only thing she could think of was hiring a detective, but that could be very expensive, and she was on a limited income. But if she had to sell her home and move into an apartment, she was determined to do so. Crystal's happiness was at stake, so she dialed the directory assistance and was given the number for an agency called King of the Sleuths Incorporated. Ring! Hello? Detecting, uh, um, King of the Sleuths Incorporated, uh, Brian White speaking. Are you a detective? Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Well, can you first tell me how much it will cost to check out a person for me? Well, each case is different. If you tell me what you want to find out about someone, that will help me give you a good idea what's involved. Well, you see, I have a niece that is getting married on October 22nd, and I don't know much about her fiancé. He seems too good to be true. I may be misjudging him, but I really need to know if he is all he claims to be. What is he claiming to be? A born-again Christian with a conversion like Paul's. Do you know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. I went to Sunday school. What's your niece's fiancé's name? David Armstrong. Where does he live? Her city. Brian held the phone, racking his brain. Why did that name sound so familiar? Then he remembered that was the name Jasper had asked him to check out just before he died. To make sure it was the same person, he asked, Ma'am, is your niece's name, um, Crystal? Matthews, yes, how did you know? Well, in May, my old boss wanted me to check him out. And what did you find? I'll look in my files and find out. I'm a little hazy on the details right now, and I wouldn't want to get it mixed up with someone else's case. That would be wonderful, and how much would I owe you for doing that for me so I can send you a check? Don't worry about paying me. This one's on the house. Oh, I couldn't do that. You've got to make a living. Ma'am, you are very kind, but it would mean a lot to me to give this one for free. It was the last case I worked on for my old boss before he died, and I know he would be very happy if I didn't charge you. So in memory of him, let's do this for free. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. I hope your new boss treats you as well as it sounds like your old one did. So far, so good, ma'am. Thanks. It didn't take Brian long to find the letter he sent to Jasper and get it retyped, but instead of mailing it, he decided to drop it off in person. Ding dong! Yes? I'm Brian White, ma'am. Oh, welcome. Please come in. Here's what you wanted. I hope it helps. Nancy read the report and her hand went to her heart as she said, Oh my! This is even worse than I thought. How am I going to tell my niece? I find the direct approach is always the best, ma'am. Yes, of course, but you don't understand. My niece already has had one very bad letdown. I fear this will crush her for good. Thank you for your help. Brian left feeling sorry for Nancy, but was very glad he didn't have to be the one to tell her niece. Nancy thought about writing to Crystal and sending that report to her, but she changed her mind. The direct approach, Detective White had said, is best, so she picked up the phone. Ring! Hello? Crystal, is that you? No, it's Kelly. Oh, hi, Kelly, dear. It's Aunt Nancy. 
I'm surprised you're home from work at this hour. Oh, I'm homesick with the flu. Oh, that's too bad, dear. Is Crystal there? Yes, I'll get her. Kelly went to find Crystal. And when she did, she said, Crystal, Aunt Nancy wants you on the phone. It must be serious for her to call. You know what a penny pincher she is. Kelly, what a mean thing to say. You know Aunt Nancy is the most generous person we know. It's hard for her all alone trying to keep up her home on her income. Preach, preach, preach. All you ever do is preach. I'm sick of it. Dan and I are moving out as soon as we can find something we like. This was the first Crystal had heard of this state of affairs, but she couldn't deal with it right then. Aunt Nancy was waiting, and Kelly was right about one thing. Aunt Nancy usually wrote not called. Hi, Aunt Nancy. This is a pleasant surprise. What's up? Crystal, dear, you are going to hate me, but I did something that I hope in the end you will forgive me for because I know I did it in your best interest. What did you do? I got a detective to check out David. Check him out? For what? To see if he is true blue. And what did the detective find out? David is a shyster. Nancy proceeded to read to Crystal what Brian had given to her. When Crystal didn't respond, she asked, Crystal, are you still there? <sighs> Barely. Oh, Aunt Nancy, what am I going to do? That's easy. Tell that creep where to go. No, I can't do that. Why not? Because David will want to know why, and when I tell him who knows what that organization with whom he is associated will do. You being so smart. Oh, Crystal, don't worry about me. You know how the Lord protected Mr. Robinson. Remember the story he told you? How someone told him that a hit had been put on him, but they couldn't carry it through because of his bodyguards? Yes, Aunt Nancy, I remember. Thanks for reminding me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, I've, I've got almost two months to catch David in the act. Then I'll be a second witness along with your detective friend that David is indeed a shyster. I'd sure like to be there when you do. Godspeed, Crystal. I love you. Bye-bye. I know you do, Aunt Nancy, and I love you too. Crystal hung up. She knew she, she, knew she was still in shock, but she also knew that she would heal. Hadn't she healed from the Jasper disappointment? She lived through that time, and she could live through this time. Her problem was, how was she going to catch David in eating forbidden food? He ate every meal with her except breakfast. Breakfast. That was it. She'd surprise him at breakfast. David was a creature of habit. He liked went to the same restaurant every morning. But where was it? Maybe Aunt Na Nancy's detective friend could tell her. Kelly entered the kitchen at that moment and asked, well, what did she want? She wanted to tell me what she thought of David. You three make a great pair. You should all live together so you can all live the way you believe God wants you to live and let David Oh, sorry, and let Dan and I do the same. Kelly, the Lord wants us all to live in harmony, his way, whether we live under the same roof or not. The fact that we differ is how that it shows the devil is deceiving one of us. Well, I believe that one is you, Kelly stamped out of the room as Crystal said. Not anymore, Kelly, not anymore.